Okay, welcome back to Design a Computer from Scratch. In part four, we will implement the register file design. We'll have a register file when we're done with this. It won't be able to do anything because then all we'll have is a program count and a register file, but at least we'll have the register file. Just a reminder from the part two video of what our requirements are for the register file and our simplifying assumptions is that there is no register to register transfers. This register file takes data, sends it either to the peripherals or the ALU or reads it from the peripherals, but it does not transfer from one register to another. The same register that was the source of data for the ALU is also the destination. So if you and 55 five with R0, the result will be stored back in R0, not in another register. If we were going to do something else, if we were going to store or move, we'd have to have that register field as an operation. And certainly an instruction could be added just to do that. But our fields are going to be very simple for this processor, and we'll just leave it this way. Uh, and typically that's not going to be a problem in I.O. applications if that's what we're targeting. You're typically going to want to read a status register from something like a UART. Mask off the bits you don't want to use with the AND and do a branch based on that mask. And probably hang around for a character to come in on that UART. So putting it in another register wouldn't really have any value. And we'll have plenty of registers by the time we're done with this register file. Another thing was that the opcode bits from the ROM, bits 11 down to 8, will select the register to be read or written. So the it'll be a pretty simple choice of, of finding the path for which register to write or which register to read. It, we did note earlier that it's going to take multiple clocks to read data and write the ALU back. And that will be taken care of in our 2-bit gray code state machine that we'll implement later. And in the that will provide enough time for the data to come out of the register file, go through the ALU, and then be written back on another clock into the data register again. So the three instructions that come to mind that immediately that affect the register file or the IO read, IO write, and ALU operations. Let's create the entity for that and we'll put it in its own file. We'll call that file register file. But the entity for it needs a clock, a 50 megahertz clock, because everything on here runs at that 50 megahertz. And this is a register file which has registers that have register bits inside of it, so we'll need that clock. We'll need a strobe for the register file, and these are all inputs. Again, using the NANLAN convention of I underscore, makes it easy to know whether something's in or out to a block. That load register file will load a particular register with a value that's presented on the data in, which is I register or file data, which is the in. And the four bits here in register select will select which register is either read or written. All that will be done inside of the register file. It will put out data if it's reading the register file, which it always does because there's nothing to say go read. It always does based on whatever's on the register select. So as soon as the opcode value reaches this part, that data will start going out. So it's a very quick access for read. And, of course, we have the same bounding names, register file here, register file here, and then that will occur later on. And right here is where it occurs. So our single register file, uh, we'll start out just making a single register. We're not going to have multiple registers in our first cut here. Um, we'll just do something to get it working. But basically, it has the single signal standard logic vector. Our registers are 8 bits wide. It's a standard logic vector because it is more than one bit wide. And it inside of the actual logic part of the code, VHDL code, 
we'll call it register file and process off the iClock. So if every time iClock comes, if I register select has the right value and it will clock the data in. What we're not showing here is the load that we need. We don't we created a load in the previous slide for loading the register file, this load right here, but we haven't put it in here yet. It will need to be added to this register select. Otherwise it'll just keep writing it on every clock and we only want to write it when we give it the strobe to write it. But this is the basic function. If the register select is zero, then write to register zero with the data that's coming in on that register F data. Let's take that register file and add it to the top. And what we need for that is a signal for the load register file. We don't have one yet, but let's just create one. It's a standard, it's a single bit standard logic. And let's set the default value to one to always load the register file at the moment. We'll just uh, sort of ignore that. And the register select, since we only have one, we're going to set a default to zero. But later on, this would be removed because it'll be driven, as will all of these values. But we're setting default values here for testing and debugging to uh, give it some values. And the register file output will be those seven bits that are there as well. So this sets up the conditions we would need, the single strobe and the other selects and data lines that we would need to operate the register file. So when we throw that instance in the top, it maps, and the previous video shows how I copy and then paste and then edit it. But basically, the register file uh, has a name. It's called reg file. An entity, make sure you have that colon there. And I always forget the work when I'm copy pasting. You need that work dot period there, and I mentioned that before. So the port maps, I goes to the I clock, the 50 megahertz CPU clock. And it would have been nice if I put some comments here, but it's easy enough to do. Load register goes to a W version of it. Again, using NANLAN's naming convention with W underscore indicating it's a wire. Load register file signal, and then the others are very similar. And when we compile this, it compiles. So we know we have a functional register file at uh, the load strobe really isn't doing anything and it isn't even hooked up inside the register file, but we've got something that's basically able to work or at least compile. If we compile, we're usually 99% of the way there. The input has uh, implicit demultiplexer and that implicit demultiplexer is done with this I reg select. So if we add another, if reg select is zero 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 one and then we had a reg one we just put a whole uh, list of them here with those pairs of lines but it's implicit because we don't actually have a demultiplexer signal router it's done by not loading the other registers and really only loading the one register that's addressed through the reg select and obviously very easy to expand if you want to have two, three, four, five, six, whatever registers, just add lines and name them appropriately. But what we do need is an output selector to pick the particular register that we want to use. And we use that same IREG selector because the same register that's read from is the one that's written back to. So we don't need a separate uh, register select for the output selection. And basically, the out, out of the part is reg file data out. It's going to pick that reg zero when I reg select is zero. Otherwise, we're going to make it zero. So if you tried to re-register one, well, it wouldn't write anything because there's nothing there, but it would read back a default value of zero. Again, this is easy to expand to. Just add this same thing, changing the reg zero to one, and reg select to zero, 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 one, and tack the line down and put in as many registers as you possibly would want. Uh, while we're here, let's go ahead and add three more registers. So we're going to have four registers in our register file to start with. Easy to expand, just copy the signals down and make more of them. But these are the four signals that we need for having four registers, and they go below the architecture statement. And let's add those into the process file. And we'll also fix the fact that we didn't put the load register in here earlier. And 
the statement works like this. If the load is true and the register being addressed is register zero, then load it. Uh, do the same thing for the others. If the load is true for all of these and the particular address is set, then load the register data. And that's really all you have to do. Again, to expand it, you would just copy these two lines, change the register select number, add another register, and of course put it back in the signals list. To expand the output multiplexer for more channels, more registers, excuse me, you do the same sort of thing. Just paste in the reg one, two, three, copy paste the reg one, two, three, and then update the counter over here for what that is. And we still keep the default value of zero if registers four through 15 are red, it will output zero. The input read multiplexer, uh, we can expand that simply while we're here and, and there, this could be useful for some things. A lot of things initialized by writing a zero or one or sometimes you want a minus one FF as your initializer. So let's make those special purpose registers. Make register eight a value of zero. So if you write out register eight to something, um, let's say you write it out to an IO port, you'll write out a zero to that port. You don't have to load it. It's always there. Register nine will make a one and register F will make an FF. So we've still got plenty of room. We've got registers four through seven we can do and we can do registers A through E. Uh, easily, e easily expandable, at least eight probably. I've written some complex applications with this processor and maybe show some of those later. There's a few other videos up on YouTube showing some of the applications, but the most registers I think I've ever used is four or five. Uh, this sort of brings up a concept of, of register scoreboarding in the more complicated application or just being consistent in the use of registers. I tend to use the lower register 012 for data that I want to send to something and Often I'll use register seven for a return value from something. And later on we'll implement subroutines, hopefully get to that. This video is a complete series up to having branching working. It does not include uh, JSR or RTS, uh, jump to subroutine or, or branch to subroutine equivalent. Nor does it include the return from subroutine, but we will, if I get to it, uh, expand the processor to add subroutines. They're not necessary for simple control loops, but if you have the desire to have subroutines because your code gets longer and you find yourself doing something over and over again, it would be nice to have that. It just adds a little bit of complication and it's unnecessary for the application at the moment. But having these constants is a useful value, useful function. Now these registers can't be written to. They will only, they're read-only registers. If you try to write to it, it won't change the value. If you try to write to register eight with something other, anything, it'll always return back as zero. So let's test the register file. I'm tempted to hop the signal tap, but I'm avoiding using that till we get to some more complicated functions. But we could easily test that by passing a, a bit into the register file, into the register zero. Uh, we'll pass the key but press and we'll see it go out so we'll grab the output of that register file and put it to the LED so now we're actually moving our key and LED through the register file simula simulating what the IO instructions will do and in the top let's add some code to do that we'll leave that register file set to 1 we'll leave the register select set to register 0 we will add on, tack on, this is a uh, concatenate or stick these two together. So seven zeros because it's eight bits of data and the key makes the eighth bit and do the same thing. So that register file in, I'll see a bunch of zeros followed by whatever the key press is. The register file out, we'll look at that lowest bit. And if we press the key and our register file load was successful, We'll see it appear out here and we release the key, we'll see it release. 
Uh, I could probably add knots here, but it's doubly knotted. It's knotted coming in and knotted going out. Basically, this will show us that the register file is uh, moving data through it. It's not a very sophisticated test. It's not testing all the registers, not testing all the bits. But the way this thing is coded, it's hard to make one bit work and not have all the bits work. I think we'd be fairly confident that this is moving through the register at least. And to change the register select, in here we'll change the register select to make it register um, the key number. If we want to go to another register, we could do that. Uh, that would select between, we could play with our constants. By the way, the last step ran too. Um, if we want to go between checking the two constants, register 0 and register 9, all we have to do is, is change that register select least significant bit to equal the key. So if you press the key, the register select will be, in this case, 0 because of the way it works. And we'll see that reflected out of the light. We're leaving the OLED still on the register file output because uh, it's always selecting the channel here. Same channel in for same channel out. And that should uh, should let us test it. So we're shoving in a zero for the data, but we're selecting between the two registers. It doesn't really matter what we throw in again. Register 8 and register 9 do not have write capabilities. They're read only. And basically this works. You press the key button and you see the light toggle between on and off because it's reading these two registers. So we've now checked uh, at least one bit on all three registers and again with some confidence that they're going to be the same just by virtue of the fact the way the thing's coded in VHDL. It'd be hard to miss one of the bits in a register and if you've got one you most likely got them all. So that was a quick video. Uh, the register file is pretty simple. It's sim simpler in a way than the counter because it's not doing any math, it's just moving data into a register and reading data out. Um, and what we've created so far is four 8-bit registers that read-write. We've created three constants in registers, register 8, which is 0, register 9, which is 1, and register F, which is FF. We've got a lot of room for more registers, or we could even throw in constants if there was an application that always Played, played with D2. We can make a value or register A, let's say, was 0x02, zero zero and that would always be in there, or some other mask value or something like that. Anything that would be written uh, would be appropriate there as well. Now we've done pretty minimal testing. We've only checked the three different registers. We've loaded register 0 and only one bit of it. But we will test more of this at a higher level. And this should give some confidence that things are in pretty good shape. Uh, first, something to note here is I have created a GitHub repository with the build. Uh, I started tagging them. Uh, this build is, I believe, part five, I believe. I'm losing track here. Uh, it's part five, the register file, and there's branch for that. So you can go to here and click on branches if you want to just play with what we've done so far. Uh, everything is in there for the complete build all the way up at the moment to uh, branch sub, or not branch subroutine, all the way up to branch on zero, branch on not zero. So it's, it's completely functional in the example that's up here. And if you want to look at the top level entity in that, particular branch you can see the code for this so if you don't want to type it in and you just want to play with it it's up there if you want more information you can see our wiki pages for these products and we have YouTube videos on them as well we have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards thanks for watching our video and if you enjoyed it don't forget to like share and subscribe